What's going on all of my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Today we are going to be listening to heart sounds and where we can find them. Let's get started. So let's begin by looking at our cardiac auscultation sites. To begin with, it's easy to remember where these sites are and how we're listening to them by using a mnemonic. Something that I was taught in school when I was in nursing school was all physicians earn too much. All, aorta, physicians, pulmonic, earn, herbs point, two, tri tricuspid, and much, mitral. There's other mnemonics you can use, like all people enjoy Time Magazine, as well as Eight to Man. However, this is how I remembered it, so this is how I uh, continue to use it. So when it comes to our aortic um, auscultation site, it's going to be located at the second intercostal space on the right sternal border. So we have a sternal border right here, and it is gonna be located on that second intercostal space at the right sternal border. When it comes to our pulmonic valve, you're kind of just going across the border. So this one is gonna be located at the second intercostal space, left sternal border. So we've got our right, and we've got our left, our aortic, and our pulmonic. Next we have herbs point, and where we're gonna be listening to that is going to be the third intercostal space, left sternal border. Then we have our tricuspid valve. You're gonna be hearing that at the fourth intercostal space, left sternal border. And lastly, we have our mitral valve, which is going to be at our fifth intercostal space, but this one is going to be at the mid clavicular line. So you have your clavicle right here, the middle of that, you're just gonna go straight down to your fifth intercostal space. The anatomic locations allow us to listen to the closing of our four cardiac valves. So when we're listening to our heart, we're going to hear this beautiful love dub love dub love dub sound. Well, what exactly is that? What are we listening to? So we have our S1 heart sounds. That is our love sound. That's the sound that you hear on your stethoscope. So this occurs due to the closer, closure, I'm sorry, of the atrioventricular valves. And that's the valves between our atrium and our ventricles. So we have two. We have our mitral valve, which is located on the left side of our heart and between the left atrium and left ventricle. And then we have our tricuspid valve, which is located on the right side of the heart in between our right atrium and right ventricle. And this is really going to be heard, auscultated the loudest at the apex of the heart, which is located at the mid clavicular fifth intercostal space that we discussed before. So this sound is going to mark the beginning of systole. And what systole is, is it's the heart uh, contracting and pumping blood from the chambers in to uh, our aorta and our lungs. So next we have our S2 heart sounds, and that is the dub noise that we hear whenever we listen or auscultate our patient's heart. And this occurs due to the closure of the semilunar valves, and those are traditionally the valves in between our um, in between the ventricles and our arteries. So that could be our aorta or our pulmonic artery, right? So our aortic valve um, is again between the aorta and the left ventricle, and our pulmonic valve is located between the pulmonary artery and the right ventricle. So this is gonna be heard or auscultated the loudest at the base of our heart, and that is going to be that second intercostal space right sternal border. That's that where that aortic valve area is located. And this sound is going to mark the beginning of diastole. And that is when our heart is going to relax and allow our chambers to fill up with blood. So sometimes you're not always going to hear that beautiful love dub sound. Sometimes there's going to be a little something extra when it comes to our heart. And that can also be known as systolic and diastolic murmurs. And those are usually caused by one of two things, either stenosis or insufficiency. So let's take a closer look at what those are. So with stenosis, that's that forward flow of blood through narrow stenotic open valves. So when you think of stenosis, that, oh, think of our open valves. It happens when our valves are open. 
So if the valves should be open, but they're not able to open all the way, you're going to have stenosis. Whereas with insufficiency, that's that backward flow of blood through incompetently closed valves. So if the valve should be closed but cannot close all the way, then we have insufficiency. So with a systolic murmur, you're going to hear an S1 murmur, S2. So lub, mm, duh, lub, mm, duh, right? So that happens between the S1 and S2. And with mitral and tricuspid valves being closed during, during systole, you're going to have insufficiency. So think about it. So when the heart is pumping blood during systole, our ventricles are pumping blood out to the body, our mitral and tricuspid valves should be closed, right? Because it sh it's not going out to our lungs and, um, uh, I'm sorry, it's not going from our right atria and left atria to our ventricles, it's going out to the body through the lungs and the heart. So our valves in between our atria and our ventricles should be closed. So if they should be closed during that time and you hear this sound, it's more of an insufficiency problem, right? So if you hear the sound um, at the apex, fourth or fifth intercostal space mid convicular line during systole, then we know we have an insufficiency. Whereas if you hear the noise um, over the base at the second intercostal space, right sternal border, then we know we have a stenosis taking place because during systole, the aortic and pulmonic valves should be open. That's our ventricles contracting blood to our lungs and our heart. So if we hear it at the second intercostal space right sternal border, then we have stenosis. Moving on to our diastolic murmur, that's going to be the lub dub mm, lub dub mm. Love, love, mm. So that's what you're going to hear when it comes to diastole murmurs. So that's typically going to be heard after the S2. And what happens during diastole, right? That is the time that the heart relaxes and the blood is flowing from our atria into our ventricles. So what valve should be open? Well, that's going to be our mitral and our tricuspid valve. So if you hear this sound taking place at the heart's apex or the fourth or fifth intercostal space midclavicular line, we know that we have a uh, mitral tricuspid valve stenosis because that is supposed to be open. Those valves are supposed to be open during diastole. Well, if those valves are open, what valves are closed? our aortic and our pulmonic valves are closed. So if you hear that at the base of the heart, at the second intercostal space, right sternum border, then we're most likely looking at either a, a or a an or, aortic or pulmonic valve insufficiency. So outside of our systolic and diastolic murmurs, we also have these additional murmurs, starting with our S3 murmur, also known as ventricular gallop. So when you're auscultating, your patient, you may hear kind of like a Kentucky sound. Kentucky, Kentucky, Kentucky. That's kind of what that sound sounds like. And that's due to ventricular gallop. So it occurs due to the rapid rush of blood into dilated ventricles. So chambers of the heart are dilated because the heart muscle is weakened and cannot pump effectively. So we talked about earlier, when it comes to blockages, um, as well as any kind of damage to the heart, sometimes these things occur, right? So this is gonna be auscultated best at the apex of the heart, and you really can hear it better with the bell end of your stethoscope. So the sound occurs early in diastole, right after S2, um, and it's associated with heart failure. It may occur um, before you even hear crackles in the lungs, right? So again, other causes can be mitral, aortic, or tricuspid insufficiency, where the valves become damaged and the valves don't close all the way and some blood flows backwards instead of um, out from the chamber. Pulmonary hypertension, a hypertension that affects the arteries of the lungs and the right side of the heart, and the heart has to work harder to force blood through because of that uh, constriction of the blood vessels. And, it, and lastly, you have core pulmonale, which is that abnormal enlargement of the right side of the heart as a result of the disease of the lungs or the pulmonary blood vessels. And the last heart murmur that we're gonna be looking at is our S4 murmur, also known as our atrial gallop. So we had our ventricular gallop and now we have our atrial gallop. And that is going to sound like Tennessee, Tennessee, 
Tennessee. That's the sound that it's going to make um, due to that atrial gallop happening in the heart. And this traditionally occurs due to atrial contraction of blood into a non-compliant ventricle. So this is best going to be auscultated at the apex of the heart. And again, you want to use the bell in order to hear it clearly. So the sound is going to occur before our S1. And this can be associated with a number of things. Myocardial ischemia can be a cause due to the blood flow of the heart being reduced, preventing it from receiving enough oxygen. Uh, myocardial infarction, blood flow to the heart is essentially blocked. Hypertension, everything's just kind of constricted down. We have ventricular hypertrophy, I'm sorry, when it comes to the enlargement or thickening of the ventricular walls. And then lastly, we have the aortic stenosis, which is that aortic valve narrows, preventing blood um, from flowing from the heart into the aorta. Something that's really important to know that if we have this atrial gallop taking place, do you think you're going to hear an S4 in the presence of atrial fibrillation? Hmm. So if we are not able to appropriately atrial contract blood into that non-compliant ventricle, do you think you're going to hear this? Absolutely not, because you need that atrial contraction, right? So with atrial fibrillation, you're more nine times out of ten are not going to hear this S4 when it comes to auscultating your patient's heart sounds. I hope that this video was helpful in understanding the cardiovascular system. If you have any additional questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Make sure you follow me on my social media. I'm on Facebook as well as Instagram. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe here on YouTube and turn that bell notification on so that you're notified every time I post a new video. Head over to www.nursechung.com where there's additional resources as well as questions when it comes to the cardiovascular system. But until next time, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye.